you can hear me. Yes, you can. <laughs> Welcome for joining. I'm Harmony and you are watching Harmony and Friends, casual conversations about art and business. Today is the eighth episode and we have a super juicy topic to learn about, which is art licensing. And while I tell you a tiny bit about the topic and we start with the introductions from the artists. I have a question for everyone watching. I know for a lot of us, this is aspirational. We haven't gotten there yet. So what is your dream brand that one day you would love to license artwork with? So while you think about that, one of the things I want to make sure we're on the same page about, and the artists are going to correct me if I'm wrong, but that is that first question of what is art licensing, because not maybe all of us have done that before. So from what I understand, it is the equivalent of renting out your artwork to a company for a fee or royalty for a specific use, a specific period of time, and maybe a specific area or product. And all the while you are able to keep that copyright, you are even potentially able to license the artwork out to an additional company in a different field. So it's a very, very interesting approach that may even allow you to use some of the artwork you have already created. But I'm absolutely no expert, but we have a few artists on that some of them are experts and some of them have at least gotten that first deal in and are maybe one step ahead of you. So we are going to have them introduce themselves. Hello. Hello. I'm so, so glad that you're on. And I'm really excited to hear all about your experience. Now, for all of you watching, I just wanted to give you a quick heads up. I am experimenting with the format a little today, and I think it'll be good for everyone watching and the artists as well, which is that before we had um, sometimes more focused topics or questions where an artist would speak for maybe 10 minutes at the time and the other artists didn't know what to do with themselves <laughs> during that time. So today I'm going to pose the same questions to everyone and any of the artists is able to jump in. It's going to be more conversational. We can have everyone answer or just one person, however it works out. But I think it's going to be more fun to watch and more fun to participate. So with that, we are going to start with a little round of introductions. Um, Jill, why don't you start? Just tell us two to three minutes about yourself as an artist, your art business, anything you'd like us to know if there's anyone watching that hasn't heard about you yet. Hi, um, I'm Jill Lebenick and gosh, I've been working as an illustrator since I graduated from art school, which is back in 2007, forever ago. <laughs> Um, and I've spent most of my career actually working as an in-house illustrator and designer. Um, so that means I've worked for different companies, um, mostly in the gift space. And most recently, I was working um, at an awesome job where I was managing a small design team and I was doing a lot of art directing, um, still designing and also managing artists. So I've had a lot of experience from the back end of they're receiving pitches from various artists that want to work with the company um, and licensing art from that side of stuff. Um, and I've licensed my own art over the years for various products as well. And most recently, I decided it was time to start focusing on my own art because I spent so much of my career creating art for other companies. So I really wanted to spend some time focusing on myself. So I left my job, which is scary. And I am now a full-time freelancer. So that's Congratulations. Thanks, Steph. <laughs> wow. Very cool, too. It's an interesting, um, I think, history you have there. So you already know the other side, the inner workings of things. And now you're approaching it with your own art. Awesome. Very, very cool. Jess, how about you? Um, yeah, I'm Jess Phoenix. Uh, I live in Seattle. And um, it's funny because I... I've been at the same company for a very long time, 15 years, and it's the same company that I actually met Jill at. Um, I didn't know this. This was yeah. totally <laughs> We worked together um, for a long time. <laughs> we did. Yeah. Um, it's an in like as an in-house like illustrator, designer, always for like um paper-based gift products, um, like physical products, which is I think it's a really amazing opportunity to be able to design for physical products. But um Around like 2015, 2016, I, I felt a little uh, stifled by, you know, like Jill said, when you're having to create art just for other people, that can be really hard. 
even if it's a wonderful job, it's still really hard. So I started doing kind of a side thing that was just for me. Uh, that was officially, I think 2016 was when I really launched that. And yeah, it's kind of grown into a full side business and, uh, where I illustrate mostly, um, very vibrant, uh, floral art, um, just cause it's a fun way to play with color pretty easy, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And it's, I'm, I'm just amazed at the opportunities that I've had over the years. Um, so like, I haven't been doing this for a super, super long time, but I mean, I've, I've been able to see some fun growth over the years and be able to license my art and do some bespoke stuff too. So, yeah. And that's that's great. I mean, I think a lot of us watching here in the audience, we've never done this, right? So this is a big goal and you have pulled it off. So I think even if you say you don't have, you know, years and years of licensing experience, it's, I think, very relatable and very cool to also hear someone who's kind of starting this um, in a more, you know, it's a new income stream for you. Um, so that's very interesting. And yeah, I love so far. Um, I have the links, by the way, if you're watching for everyone in the description. So feel free to check out the Instagram. I love conversations like this because you can see that it's possible with such different art styles. So just the first two artists and then Lisa, I mean, completely different styles. Jess, yours is really bright and vibrant and punchy. And I, I think it's really fun that it looks like there is, you know, potential and you don't have to stick into one certain style. So very cool. Lisa, how about you? Tell us a little about yourself. Um, I started off, um, I went to college in graphic arts, but I always had a tendency to, or, or I was more into the drawing part instead of the graphic part. So then I got my first job was in the wallpaper business. So right off the bat, I fell right into the right place at the right time. So I was a stylist in this wallpaper company and I started designing and going to the press and approving the colors on the press. So from there, I, um, I joined with this company in New York who was, um, they, they sold images for products and uh, I, would, I would design collections and, and send it to them and they would sell it for a, a fee and I would get half of it. It was not licensing. I did not know about licensing then. So that's the way I started. I left the wallpaper, started working just for them. And then, you know, one thing led to another. And, and today I work only in, in licensing. And it's been 30 years now in licensing. Wow. So Lisa's going to have a treasure trove of information. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you all for sharing so, so much. Uh, I, I love your watercolor too, Lisa. It's just, I don't know, it feels so, it's like heartwarming looking at your mm, stuff. Really nice. beautiful. Nice. <laughs> all right. So we are um, going to go into this little round that I call setting the scene. So it's a few more questions that are specific about your business and art licensing that I would like each of you to answer. Um, Lisa, we are going to start with you on this one with the first question, and then we'll just go counterclockwise. Um, so what kind of art business do you have? What other income streams do you have from your art besides art licensing? And if that's all you do, that's awesome too. But <laughs> And that's all I do. <laughs> That's all I've been doing for 30 years now, uh, art licensing. So uh, I create collections and send them off to my agent and he does his magic at the other end. And I only, the thing I do here is I, I sit down and paint with my coffee, my music and my cat. It's wonderful. That's what, what I a do. dream. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I think you just made everyone's heart jump. Like this uh, is possible, you know, it is. it's possible to live off of our licensing. That's incredible. Incredible achievement. Jess, how about you? Um, I'd say the main kind of business that I, I'm, trying licensing is a part of it but also getting to do kind of uh, I don't know collaborations where I am creating very specific artwork for a client and then actually usage and licensing is a big part of that next step um, some clients will require a copyright but I try not to do that um, but yeah so that's kind of been a main and also like on my website I sell like prints and tote bags and blankets are the new thing that I've uh, started selling. But um, yeah, and then also just the, 
the job that I've had for 15 years being an in-house uh, illustrator and designer. So, And you all shared a little visual with me that I can share a little later in the live stream. And I thought that was really interesting about yours, Jess, those, those different collaborations you've done are fascinating. So we'll take a peek at them, even though it isn't strictly licensing, because I think it's another really interesting avenue that people might be interested in. Um, Jill, how about you? Since my business is just starting, <laughs> um, I'm kind of in a similar position as Jess where I've worked so long as a product designer that it's it's hard for me to step away and just hand my artwork off um, to someone and, and see it end up on a product. Like, I love doing that. That's great. Um, but I also like working with brands and collaborating. Um, so like right now, I'm doing a work for hire project, which does mean that the company I'm working with owns the rights to the art in the end. But it's a really cool tableware collection and it is very specific to their customer base. And so it's at the end of the day, I'm like, yeah, you obviously should own this art. Like it isn't art that I would probably want to relicense anyway. Um, but that's kind of the space I like to be in. I like to get a creative brief and I like to problem solve and, and all of that. So, yeah. Very cool. So three different approaches, all of which include some art licensing. All right, so this is the question. We'll go back, uh, Jill, you're up first. So that is what type of art have you licensed? So is it, you know, art for like surface pattern design, right? Um, is it standalone illustrations, collections? What kind of art have you licensed so far? All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> I will say that's one thing now. Um, there's a lot of classes going around for surface pattern design specifically, um, and they're tend to be focused on the quilt market. And I think there's been a little bit of a lack of understanding that surface design is really anything. Like it doesn't have to be a pattern. It can be an illustration. It can be lettering. It can, you know, literally what kind of art can go on a surface. And so I've definitely licensed patterns. I've licensed throughout my career more illustrations than patterns, I would say. Um, working in the stationary field, you don't need a ton of repeat patterns. A lot of times you can just kind of scatter things and fake it. And so, yeah, the bulk of it's been stationary, illustration-based. Um, yeah, but I've all, all of the above. <laughs> Lisa, I'm going to ca catch you off guard now. You're up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going away. I know, I know. Got to keep you on your toes. <laughs> yes. Well, um, I, like I said before, I do collections, complete collections. Like I don't do one-off images or nothing like that. And I don't usually create specific collections for the clients. I will, I will create a collection around um, the seasons, around the trends and um I will send that off to my agent and he'll show it. So it's always a collection base. So you'll have four main patterns, uh, which are um, four patterns, or I mean, not patterns, but four main images that will go either on like four plates, four coasters, four wall art pieces. So you need these four major pieces. And then in that, you can have some quotes and you absolutely need the patterns. And you want to you want to sell it in different formats so that it'll fit in a circle and in a rectangular and shape and a square shape uh, for different products. So that's what you want to do is in one collection, you have to create all these images and then show it in different formats. Wow, that is extensive. But mm -hmm. I can see how it would sell and I'm excited to show the visual that you shared. As well. <laughs> Jess, how about you? Mm -hmm. For me, I'd say uh, it started out as a lot of uh, licensing, just singular pieces of artwork that I was creating. Um, mm -hmm. Some of the first licensing deals that I got were, you know, in the stationary wor world for greeting cards. And so, um, but over the years, I've, I've always been making patterns, but I've been trying more and more to put more patterns in my feed. My Instagram feed is kind of like, I mean buy options for people to license. I know it's not as like organized as having like a licensing book, um, maybe someday, but uh, I feel like that just fuels the way that I create a little more. Like I'll just make the art that I wanna make and mm -hmm. I post it there. And if people have interest in it, then they can inquire and then uh, work from there to license. But yeah, getting into the realm of um, pattern design is something that I've, you know, I'm, I've been excited to finally 
license that a bit more, um, especially on fabric and uh, other other products. <laughs> <laughs> it's an exciting journey. I'm going to start with you just this time. Um, when did you lock in your first art licensing deal and how many art licensing deals have you done since? And if it's you, you've only one, done one, that's still so exciting. So no matter what number, it's good. <laughs> um, when you listed these questions before, I made sure to research this so I actually knew. Um, and Thank it's you. funny because <laughs> the, the answer is surprising. As I was going back, through the emails of like, you know, various contacts over the years. Um, some of my earliest ones, I actually, uh, like inquiries I got, I had to turn down because when I was in that, I mean, I still am in the position that I am in uh, designing in-house for a company. Mm -hmm. They do a lot of paper product. And at first they were like, you can't do that, which is not cool. Um, but then they loosened up and uh, uh, there were opportunities. But there are some mm -hmm. that I look back, I was like, oh, shoot, I could have could have been designing stationery for Argentina. But um, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny because the very first licensing inquiry I got was from Urban Outfitters, which is like that's not common, I feel, to all of a sudden have like Urban Outfitters knocking on your door. Um, that was yeah, to license I worked for a wall tapestry, which is like, oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Whack the mic. Um, that was pretty intense. I wouldn't say yeah. it was like prestigious as far as money, but um, it was a it was a good opportunity to do. Mm -hmm. Um, but then shortly, so that was September 2016, and then shortly after that, I was inquired by Papyrus, and I've had a long term relationship mm -hmm. with Papyrus. They I've done a lot of stuff over the years for them, both licensing and kind of um, uh, art that I make for them that they then um, own a very limited copyright of, um, which is something that like, I feel very passionate about copyright versus licensing and all the ways that you can, you know, work with that over the years. But uh, yeah, and I don't know, as far as other licensing deals, I don't know. 10, 12, it, 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 it's like <laughs> you create something and then you can license it. Like, even though it's created for um, the specific client, you can then mm -hmm. license it to them and then, you know, have that freedom. Very cool. You really hit the ground running there with some big clients. Awesome. 12, that, that's uh, it's not a bad number either. <laughs> Jill, how about you? My very first license, and I didn't even know what art licensing was at the time, um, was back in like, want to say 2008 maybe with red cap cards um and they wanted me to create a line of cards for them and I did and it was awesome but yeah I had no idea what art licensing was because I was so used to doing work that the client owned and I remember emailing them so many times to be like oh someone else wants to print this on a calendar is that a okay and they're like yes it's totally fine it's just greeting cards that you can't you can't you know reuse this art for and I was like okay what is this world like this is crazy um <laughs> so that, was, that was a really great opportunity um and my style has changed a lot since then like that work is just totally different from what I do now but um yeah so that was my first one and that was think since then probably same thing like 10 10 ish 12 ish just in different industries um again um I've was working full-time so it's not something I put a lot of effort into I wasn't going out and pitching my work I don't have an agent so it was just people would see my work somewhere find it on Instagram or Pinterest and then be like hey would you license this and so yeah that's kind of cool. how it's been going mm -hmm. very interesting I think that's I mean that's that's Wow. I want to say good to hear, but maybe not because that's just luck. So maybe it is good if we talk a little about it. I've been really lucky. I will say that. <laughs> I don't want that I to be the advice people walk away with. Like, I'll oh, just wait. Someone will eventually show up. <laughs> I don't know. You might have, you, your work is very good, but maybe there was a little element of luck there too. <laughs> Lisa, how about you? Yeah, there's a big element of luck in my uh, licensing story. Also, um, my first licensing was with a little company in Montreal because I'm from Quebec here in Canada. And um, it was in 1995. I'm going way back, guys. <laughs> Nothing to do with me. <laughs> 1995. Um, yeah, so 
it's an interesting story. It's a, uh, it's, um, I had a write up in a magazine and it was laying in a dentist's office. I was, um, published in this magazine talking about my work and, um, my art director who I work with still today. Wow. Picked up that magazine, looked through it and said, Oh, she's interesting. I'm going to call her up and see if she wants to do a licensing for our company. And um, that little company went skyrocket. I mean, it was crazy. And that was, I was receiving like, wow, it was, they were good, good checks really. Cause the company was on a move way up. And, um, that was my first, that was my first licensing. It was fun. Wow. Yeah. And you probably yeah, can't I, even I, put a number sorry. to how many cents, right? You've stopped. How many cents? No, no, no. I can't count that. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. Very, very cool. All righty. So we are going to move on. Um, I, let's see. <laughs> I'm going to put this question up here. And some of you have given me a portfolio. Some of you have given me a brand book. Whatever it is that you've provided, I would love for you to speak to for a few minutes. Um, Jill, is it okay if we start with you? Sure. Yeah. All right. So. I'm trying to remember what I sent. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> All righty. Let's get this up. Oh, yes. Okay. So what I wanted to share, I've got personally, and I have no idea if this is the right thing to do, the wrong thing to do, no clue. But I've got kind of three different uh, portfolio decks. Um, this one here, this is just like a sample page of it. I have categorized by um, subject matter. And this is actually more for myself, but I, I can keep track of stuff. And if I've got I don't know, a client that wants to see more work and I know that I've licensed certain patterns in there in the same industry, I can quickly pull them out and I can resend it. So it's just a really easy InDesign document that I can update quickly um, and send out a link to. I've also got more of a lookbook, which I don't have pictures of here that has more lifestyle images in it as well as some of my art because my art can kind of shift from being a little more on the whimsical juvenile side and it can also go a little more adult and I feel like I can tell the story better when I've got some environmental images in there as far as like how I'm seeing this art and wanting it to show up in the world. Um, so I've got that as a second lookbook and that's something that I would send out to brands that I really want to collaborate with that I want to be able to tell my story with them and partner with them and really build something together. And then the third one I have, and again, like I said, I have no idea if this is the right thing to do or not, but um, as I do have a portfolio of illustrations that I feel like would work well for like greeting cards or things that aren't pattern related, um, I do sometimes for certain clients that I feel like could use both, I'll include them together, but I just find that there's certain markets that are just different. And I really want to be able to show them like, hey, I also understand type because I'm a designer and I also understand mm -hmm. layout. And I want to, I want you to understand that I can help you build this product. And I'm not just going to hand you a pattern if that's not what's necessary for the job. So I've kind of got those three different things that I work with. And it just sort of depends on who's requesting the work and who I'm pitching the work to as to what I'm sending out. Jill, do you also send things out um, in um, collections kind of, or is this genuinely how you do it, like you said, by um, topic, like flora and fauna? Um, so in my lookbook, I have a few things by collection. I tend to not design in collections and there's good and bad to that. Um, for certain markets, like the quilt market, for example, designing in collections is good. They want to buy in collections. Um, but I've had a lot of success with people just wanting to carry different prints. And I do have enough um, sort of simpler things that people can pull and build their own collection out of because I'm always willing to change colors if necessary. So in my lookbook, I do have a few that I'm sharing by collection. Um, but yeah, I do a lot of more one-offs because that's for me what I'm passionate about is like creating this little world. And I do, and I'll have, so for example, sorry, this is really convoluted without images, but that um, top left pattern with the foxes in it, that yeah. I licensed for wallpaper and it's part of my fabric collection as well. Um, 
And I've done some simple spot illustrations using some of those characters and florals and colorways as well. So that can help build out a collection. So if someone is looking to create homewares mm -hmm. from it, for example, and they need more of a spot illustration to put on a plate or a mug or whatever, they can sort of build that out. Um, yeah, so I don't present a ton of collections. Again, don't know if that's good or bad, but that's just how, how I've been doing it. And I'll probably change that as I go and kind of see what works and doesn't work. But I, I think honestly, I love the the real answers because I think that's refreshing always that there is not necessarily one perfect way. It depends on the markets you're going for. It depends on your art. That's kind of what I'm gathering so far. So I actually really like uh, that you just give that honest answer. And I mean, this is absolutely gorgeous. So I think it's working <laughs> and you're getting the deal. So it's very <laughs> <Who knows? laughs> All righty. Um, Lisa, may I put you up next with your yeah. portfolio? All righty, so I'm going to drag you here to the top. And then here we go. Let me know if you want me to go to a certain page. Um, otherwise yeah, I mean, I'll I mean this is through. just blah, blah about, about me. And, and this is the way, <laughs> yeah, like you, you're skipping through, like, Go back again, go back a right. few. Yeah. There, there you go. This is a good example of collections because these are this year's uh, top collections and they are big collections. So as you see the first one, Blessed by Nature, when I talk about doing four images that will go on four plates, four coasters, four wall arts. So you have mm -hmm. the bird, you have the little house with the mm -hmm. quotes, you have the bird house. And then you'll have four, I, there's a, this is a huge collection. So I have four square images with the florals mm -hmm. and um, then all the patterns to go with this. Wow. The same happens on the other side with the green fields. Um, we have to follow the, the um, colors, the, the colors that are in right now. It's a mm -hmm. must to follow the colors that are in right now. Wow. And uh, so green is, is big. Mm -hmm. So I went with a botanical look here with the insects and flowers. Well, flowers are my thing. I've, it's always been about flowers. So that's, that's an example here about I did a wreath. Um, I did uh, the bugs in, in a frame. And then there's the patterns that go with it with the color chips. And then you have the, the mock-ups to give some examples. Yeah. Exactly. I really, yeah. yeah. These are gorgeous and I can see how, yeah, you would just want to buy the whole package because it's so, you know, obviously laid out that you can really imagine it. And it's also really cool that I, I have uh, this little scan, scan me to see option. So you have additional information if someone really likes this page that they can yes. jump to. That's yes. cool. Yes, that's, that's fun. You just scan that and then you can go see the whole collection. Very, very tricky in a very good way. <laughs> you mentioned uh, colors are so important, um, that that's a big theme for your art and the market and you have to, you know, go on trend. How do you find those? And can you speak a little more about color? Um, I think you have to have kind of a, a sixth sense about color. At some think... level, Lisa, we need to, we want to be able to learn. <laughs> Well, I think you have to see the trends. You have to see it happening in fashion. You have to go into the high-end stores and see what they're selling. And, and you have to, like, if you love purple, great, but it's not going to sell. Purple is not the, the color. You might sell one. You might sell a few. But if you want to do a collection and you know it's going to hit a, a bigger market, you must follow the trend. So you go on mm. Pinterest and, and type trends for, for 2023, 2024, whatever. Just have to keep on the trends. That's very, very helpful. Yeah. See, you, you say it's intuition, but those were some very applicable tips. Thank you. <laughs> Let me just scroll a few a little more and maybe there's a few other things you want to point out. Otherwise, uh, we can move well, on. To Jess. You can go down some more. I think I have a, um, a Christmas collection there. Well, and uh, yeah, there's one there on your right, a Christmas collection where I took the gnomes, which are, are, tr were trending. I think they're already going. 
So the gnomes, <laughs> the gnomes, but I went with a more whimsical feel for that Christmas collection. But you see, it's a limited color palette. There's a red, a green, and a teal. Limited color palette. Don't go all crazy in your colors. And then the next page on your, um, on your left, this is parts of the newest Christmas collection. Um, you don't see it very well here, but once again, very limited color palette. Make sure you're following the trends, greens and reds for Christmas. They're the thing. It might be fun to add a pink, but, and I did here, but you have to be careful. It has to still read Christmas, you know? That's really solid advice. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. All right. And yeah, you you presented differently than than Jill, right? So again, I think it's very, very interesting the different approaches that artists have taken. All righty. Jess, I am going to move you up here to the top slot and show yours. Now, I know you have said this is not specifically an art licensing portfolio, so this is something different, uh, but I still thought it was really interesting how you presented your brand in this. So maybe you can still take a few minutes to share what you've done here. Yeah, well, even that past pattern, that's a, that's a pattern that I have licensed to other people. So, I mean, it's just like kind of the, the artwork that makes up what I do. And it's funny because like I... Color is a big thing for me too, but I'm just kind of like, I do what I want. <laughs> That's all <laughs> I do. And I think sometimes that can be popular and sometimes it can't, but it's feeding a part of my soul, which I really appreciate. But yeah, so these are some of the um, uh, projects that I've done in the past um, where, I mean, yeah, getting to, this was a license, uh, licensing to a clothing company in Australia. Um, and then previously was uh, the, uh, go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this was, actually, I didn't get paid for this because this is the very, very first um, uh, release that Izzy Wheels did. But it's one of those things where it's like, well, why wouldn't I want to create artwork for something that is just so cool? And I was actually exploring their website recently and they, um, like, this is one of their top selling designs. And just wow. to see all the photos of actual people using my artwork on their wheelchairs is just like, I love it. It's one of the yeah. best things. Cool. And um, yeah, and then previously was uh, working with Sephora, uh, which was a really cool um, opportunity. It wasn't in the US, unfortunately, but um, yeah, so. Uh, so would you consider this a brand book or what's like, when, when do you use this kind of Well, display? I created this because there's an agency that represents me in China and they wanted like, show us everything that you've done so we can show this to clients and they can get a sense of like the kinds of products that you can do. Yeah, this was a uh, Marks and Spencer uh, collaboration, um, kind of designing this lenticular bottle. Um, yeah. And this is like, I designed it and then they licensed it for a time and then they wanted to use it for other things. So they had to license it again. And okay. that's great. <laughs> um, those opportunities I think are, are really great because like, I mean, I think people assume that when you are working with big brands that you're making the art and then they own it. Um, that is sometimes the case, but there are other times where, you know, you still own the licensing rights. So if they want to use that for, products down the line they come back to you and I mean it's not like big big money all over the years but you know it's every little bit helps um now I'm gonna ask you all a question correct me if I'm wrong because this is all theory for me what I've learned from speaking to artists like you um, or taking courses but my understanding is that in general so all of these documents are really really helpful to have but that usually um, what you put in a licensing portfolio will be different than what you're putting in a portfolio if you're trying to do collaborations, for example, because in the licensing portfolio, you would often put or usually put work that is available, period. Um, is, that, is that correct? And then like for something like collaborations or a brand book, you would be able to show like, hey, I've done all these things, even if there's no way for someone to buy those anymore. It's more of an example of what you could do um, to develop something new for a company. Is, is that right? Or is that total garbage? <laughs> you can tell me, it's fine. <laughs> If someone requests my licensing portfolio, I will only send them work that's available to them in their industry. Um, 
just because I, I it's it's a bummer if someone's like I want this and I'm like sorry I already licensed it so someone in the industry you can't have it like it just it just makes things easier but yeah that's why I do have a more lifestyle lookbook for collaborations and that is artwork that's maybe available to license may not be just sort of depending on on what's in there but Jill, could you um, send it to them anyways, even if it has been licensed in that area, but then add to it this, you, you cannot have this specific product or image, I mean, but if you want something similar to it, I can always create it for you so they can see a wider scope of what you do. Is yeah, so I can anyhow. Yeah, I can do that. And I have had that happen a few times, especially like because I think I'm in the same spot as Jess where it's like Instagram kind of becomes a portfolio of sorts and people will be like, can I have this? And I'm like, I'm sorry. And sometimes I feel like there's a hard, um, I don't know if you guys have run across this or not, where you sign a licensing deal and the product may not be available for another year, year and a half, depending mm -hmm. on how it's being manufactured. And you're not sure if you're allowed to actually talk about it or not. So if a card, just say a card company reaches out and they want to use it and it's like, then I feel guilty about saying, well, another card company is already using this art because I don't want to infringe on anyone's, even if I don't disclose who the other company is, it just sort of feels like, okay, well, now you know someone else in that industry wants that. And like, where does that, yeah, I, I don't know. There's a, there's a weird line there that I'm not sure about. Um, yeah, I don't know if any of you guys have dealt with that. Or I'm not think sure. I don't think it's wrong to bring up things. I mean, as long as you're not like naming the specific company, but I feel like that can even just show that, yeah, this is a, this is a popular design and mm -hmm. I am wanted by these other companies and it, and, but yeah, I mean, it could be opportunities to discuss like, you know, like other, like other designs that are similar. I, I, I'm just dealing with something right now where a company that wants a pretty robust uh, thing from me, they, they actually point it. They're like, we want that. I'm like, you can't have that. Um, but I will make <laughs> something similar to that. And you will have more, uh, like a more robust licensing uh, ownership of that. Um, but not that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for answering that. So I guess the answer is yes and no. It's kind of garbage, but maybe not. <laughs> You got to find a way that you're comfortable with, but try not to show too many things that someone might fall in love with that they cannot actually license. Yeah, it is funny, though, because just I mean, you were talking about like differences between a licensing portfolio and a lookbook mm -hmm. and stuff. And I just feel like there are very organized ways to go about things. And it's interesting just hearing what Jill's done, what Lisa's done, because I feel like I've never made a lookbook like Hmm, maybe I should get on top of that someday. But um, yeah, I think it, it, it's, it, I just want to say, I think it's really cool to be able to talk to other artists about this because I'm learning things too in the way that I've just kind of like, like meandered my way through art over the years. And yeah. <laughs> We've all been I love these conversations. I think we all have things to teach and all have things to learn from each other. Yeah, well, I, can I say a lookbook? A lookbook is really your brand. It, it's showing customers, you send that to them so they can discover your brand. You're really creating a brand is a very important part. Everybody has their own look and you have to, that's what you, you show it in. And, you, and, you, and in, in this book and you show, um, I have so many followers and at retail, I think you have the numbers, you can put those out. You know, you really want to show how you've grown and, and what you look like. And that's your, your, your business card. Lisa, am I allowed to share? I think it's on the last page of your um, book because my mind was blown. Am I allowed to share that about the like sales and things? Oh yeah. I mean, it's, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but, sorry. I just, I just have to show this. This is crazy to me. So <laughs> let me add this and then let me go to the last slide here. So I think this is somewhat what uh, you were talking about, kind of yeah. summarizing with social media, but also just the sheer numbers. Ooh. So goals right there. Absolute hashtag goals, Lisa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you so much for letting me share that. And if you right. haven't so, built a brand book, I was just going to say it's really, it's really rewarding to do. I think building a lookbook, it forces you to ask questions about your brand and how you want to show up and who your ideal customer is. And it really helps you shape that. 
Um, so that when you are sending it out, you really are putting your best foot forward of like, this is who I am. This is why I want to collaborate with you. You know, we're on the same page visually. And it's just a great process to go through. I think I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a cool, cool experience. Yeah, it helps hone in on, on your own brand, right? Have your um, lookbooks yielded like good, like, like, yeah, we're going to go forward with this because of like sending it out? Uh, well, I, I sent it out. That one that you saw, I, I brought it to Atlanta at the show, the big uh, um, market, Atlanta market. Uh, it's where all the, the, uh, the manufacturers are. So if you want to go into a new manufacturer who you've never done business with, I mean, you just hand that out. And sometimes they don't have time to look at it right there because they're busy, busy, but they'll, I mean, it, it is a great tool to, instead, you can't just go in and say, well, hi, I am Lisa Audit and I do um, such and such work. Uh, they, they won't get it and they won't have time for you and they'll just flush mm -hmm. you. But if you have this kind of, of book to show, it, it really, it really does help. Um, so that's one interesting um, question I have, and I'm going to look for the actual question, but I'll ask it before it goes up. How do you usually make clients aware of yourself? So it sounds like uh, potentially trade fairs um, would be one approach. What are other ways that each of you have sent out your work or contacted clients or have they all come and found you? <laughs> Hmm. I, I can I can just say that I do post things on Instagram, things that I am working on, and I have some clients that I that do follow me and they, they are steady clients and they'll say, I want this collection. It's not even finished, you know, it's in the works, but they'll say I want this collection. Otherwise it's the um the Certex, the the Atlanta shows, uh, and like I'm I'm lucky enough to have an agent so I don't have to do much of that. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like most of the uh, significant collaborations that I've done, it they've come to me. So, I mean, I actually, I feel like I haven't had a lot of good luck, like knocking on doors and having people be like, yay, let's, let's do something. I, I think there have been some, but it's mostly people finding me. And that's usually through Instagram. And I think Pinterest, um, Pinterest mm -hmm. is still this very weird creature that I still don't feel like I fully can grasp uh, the power that, you know, is Pinterest. But um, I know a lot of people find my art through there. Um, and yeah. yeah. It's one of those that I haven't wanted to touch with a 10 foot pole, but I do hear that it, as far as really like website traffic, long-term, that kind of thing, that it is a potential gold mine. So maybe I need to reconsider. I, um, <laughs> like, am I supposed to answer this? Um, if you want I, to, you don't have to. <laughs> Similar to Jess, working full-time, I haven't wanted to chase down too many things. I just yeah. didn't have bandwidth. So it's mostly been people coming to me. Um, and again, through Pinterest and Instagram, um, I've just started as of leaving my job, starting to cold pitch people, which is an interesting experience. And having been on the other end of that, to remind myself, like, if you've never worked in a creative office before, our directors are so busy and they get so many emails. Like, don't take it personally if you don't hear anything back or if they're like, hey, not right now. Um, because like what you learn when you're in that space is like, they're designing for a season. They're designing for a specific theme that year. And your art might be awesome. It just might not be for them at that right moment. But it doesn't mean they won't remember and contact you four years down the line when they've got something for you. I mean, it's just, it's a weird game. And I feel, I'm happy that I've been on the other side of that to know that and to kind of have that sort of patience and know like, hey, it's cool to send it out now. I might not hear anything for a really long time, if ever, from you, but it's cool. <laughs> but, but I think that word that you said, again, from everything I've learned so far, patience, that's one of the key words, because I think it's not just getting the deals, but then as far as everything being manufactured and the payment, I think this is one of those, yeah, it's going to take a while <laughs> situations. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. All righty. So I have 
Another question, anyone who wants to answer this one. For any of the artists watching that are interested in creating this income stream, either as a career or you know, one of the things that they focus on, what's the hardest thing and the best thing about art licensing in your opinion? Um, I think maybe the hardest thing is finding your style and, and, and focusing and keeping it because sometimes you want to show everything you can do in all your styles. And uh, we, as artists, we, we do have different things that we like. So it's kind of finding your brand and what that's and what that looks like. So staying true to your brand. And uh, what's what the best thing about the um, hmm. well, I think that's to me, that's the hardest thing is just mm -hmm staying true to and and being consistent that's a hard thing because when you're an artist you have these weeks where you are super productive and then you have this weeks where you don't want to do anything <laughs> right <Yep. laughs> and I think we have to respect that you know we're not uh, accountants who just count up numbers and that's your job if you're feeling bad or, or great I mean you count it doesn't change anything but it, when you're an artist and you have to be in this creative mo mood or zone it doesn't always work so that's the hardest part for me too is mm -hmm. getting staying into a in a creative zone that's you have to respect that if sometimes you don't want to work and and all you're putting out is is crap you might as well go do dishes because <laughs> you're not getting anything done anyways and you'll just it, it's it's a it's a ball of 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 negativity that will that's that's what you have to learn to focus on hey when you're productive <laughs> go for it it's time and then if, if 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 the productivity and the creativity isn't there just respect that take the mm -hmm. time to do other things go get inspired go to museums go on pinterest go wherever you get your inspiration take the time to get back into that inspired moment and then I think that's, I can relate to that, the, those kind of waves and the emotions and the creativity, it's nothing you can control, so you might as well just ride the waves. <laughs> Anyone else want to answer this one? Yeah, I, um, <clears throat> one of the, I'd say like the best thing is when you can create a piece of artwork that you just wanted to create. And then being able to generate something like an, an, an income from that. It's like the idea that like, oh, other people like this too. Like I really like it and it fed my soul. And now other people want to share it and put it on their products and then it can go out into the world. So that, I mean, that's, that's a really good thing. I'd say the hardest thing personally for me is just kind of weathering the uh the dry periods where mm -hmm. nothing's on your like you don't have any big jobs coming up you don't have anything and you're kind of wondering well what's going on am i am i done like my husband can attest to the many many times that i've said you know what i think this is it i think i i think i think i've run my course i'm not cool anymore like um, <laughs> i'm i'm a pretty like emotional person so I mean I think some people could definitely have an easier time with that staying level-headed and cool but I I I'm for me it's just yeah it's 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 a vulnerable thing to be creating artwork and mm -hmm. if it doesn't go anywhere sometime yeah especially like with all the changes with uh Instagram too mm -hmm. uh people used to be able to put out artwork and people would see it and I mean, I, I owe a lot of like my growth over the years to the way that Instagram had worked previously now that it doesn't work that way. I just, it's really tough to be an artist starting out right now. It is like so tough. Um, so yeah, I mean, <laughs> those are my answers. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I can, I can, I can relate to that too. Um, I think it can feel so personal, um, and then it also sometimes can feel almost mean, like you create this, and then the algorithm, the reach, like it's just no one sees it. But sometimes, yes, it gets to me, and then oftentimes I try to switch the focus too, and think this is a free platform that enables potentially the whole world, people around the world to see my work that would otherwise never see it. You know, um, so I. 
when that happens to me, I try to flip my perspective a little bit so I don't get too down, down in the dumps. But it is, you can feel kind of at the mercy of, of those sites. Yeah. All right. Um, so one more question and then we'll jump over to some audience questions. Um, so we have a bunch of comments already, but if you are watching, actually, let me take this one down really quickly and let the audience see this one, which is very straightforward. But what burning questions do you have about art licensing? If you haven't put them in the chat yet, make sure we do you do so now because I'm about to pull up a few of the audience questions. So oh, one of the things I was gonna touch on, I don't know, do you guys, I just saw Lola's question pop up and I just wanna make sure everyone understands where she said, I still don't know how to license. What, that, what it actually means to license as far as getting a contract and working mm -hmm. through that kind of stuff. I want to make sure we touch on that because I was like, that's a, that's a good question if you have no idea what the, actually the back end of that entails. <laughs> this might all sound like gobbledygook otherwise. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's great. Let's, let's start with that one. <laughs> I was just going to say a little bit about like the back and forth that can happen and it's different um, with every client you work with and every industry has different standard buckets that they'll pay. Um, but usually what happens is someone will approach you with that, con that contract and there's usually um, to license a either initial sort of payment you'll get and it can either be an advance against your royalty meaning that you have to sell through in order to start earning royalties or it can just be a true advance um, and then there's usually a royalty attachment piece to your payment and so different industries have different standards for what royalties are um, and what that is and you can usually google that pretty easily and kind of figure out greeting card industry might be this percentage fabric might be this percentage um, and that's kind of what goes into building that contract. And you can obviously negotiate and go back and forth on it. But at the end of the day, you'll still retain the copyright. They'll agree to use your art for a certain amount of time on a specific product or multiple products. That's all built into the contract is that usage agreement and then the payment terms. Um, and so the reason why people say licensing sometimes is passive income is because you'll be getting royalty checks in sometimes years after you've done the work. Um, the flip side of that is there's a lot of work that goes into getting that licensing deal. So that passive piece always makes me go, eh, it's not really passive. <laughs> it's a lot of work that goes into getting that. Um, yeah. That was a really helpful explanation. Does anyone want to add to that? Otherwise, I'll pick out a few other audience questions. All right. Good. <laughs> All right, so I have a really, really, really important one for you, Lisa, which is, what's your cat's name? <laughs> and while you answer that, I'm going to keep going and get some, some questions that are a little more on topic. My cat's name is Teddy, and she's in the Instagrams, and my Instagram's quite everywhere. She's my mascot on Instagram. So, so cute. All right. Um, so Emma has a different question as well. And that is um, whether any of you have licensed artwork to multiple companies at the same time in different spaces like home decor and stationery. Yeah. Yes. That's or the that's beauty of licensing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then there is a question about organizing the art files from Nancy. So do you have a system like with name, numbers, filing system? How do you make sure you don't get all that artwork jumbled on your computer? Yeah, well, everything is named in, in the collections that I do. Everything has a name and a number. And um, well, that does help you find your way through everything. Do you also um, categorize it kind of by, like how do you keep track of what has been licensed and to whom and what's still available for which category? You don't. Okay. I don't. Right. That's the beauty of having an agent, guys. <laughs> you do not have to take care of contracts. You do not have to see who's got the product and who and, 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 
and you're not worried about cross merchandising. I mean, there's somebody doing that work for you and all you have to do is sit and paint. Okay. That's I have a really boring, I don't have Excel um, anymore, but I have a Google, Google spreadsheet. Um, and I've got the pieces of artwork in there. Um, when the agreement expires so that I can kind of remember to, I, I mean, I trust companies. They're not usually shady. Um, and then I've got what industry it's licensed in and then whether that was exclusive to that industry or non-exclusive, that's kind of another piece that can come in a licensing contract. Some companies say, you know, I want this exclusively in the wallpaper industry and you can't license it to any other wallpaper companies, but some people don't care. And they're like, nope, it can be non-exclusive. That's fine. Um, so kind of, and some people want it worldwide, worldwide exclusivity across all categories, which is something I don't normally do just because I find that that's really unnecessary for the most part. Um, but yeah, I kind of keep track of that in the spreadsheet. And then again, my files are all named. Um, if it is by a collection, they all stay in the collections folder. If it's work for a specific company, um, I have a folder for every company that I've worked with. And in there, it's broken down by year. Um, yeah. And I keep track of my invoices as well. That way I've got one massive InDesign doc for every year. And I have all my invoices in there and I just export each one to give to a client. But then at the end of the year, it's like I can easily go through and see for tax purposes, what I've got going on. Nice. Yeah. I, I had the luxury recently of getting a new um, work, like my computer that I will use just for my business. And that kind of helped me be like, all right, I'm starting fresh. Not going to have all these things flittered everywhere. Um, my old stuff is still something I don't, <laughs> I don't even want to <laughs> deal with, but um, yeah, I definitely keep things organized by client. Um, and then there's just kind of this bucket of like artwork that I've created. And now I'm trying to organize by year. Um, so I just made a 2023 folder and that will help me know like, okay, so I'm creating all the new art that I create this year is just in there and I'll classify it by patterns or, um, just, you know, standalone illustrations. Um, I want to stress the importance of always keeping track of your finances Find a way that works for you. If you're starting it, like you need, you need to, I mean, you don't need Excel. You can use Google Sheets. That's how I organize all my like royalty payments I get, you know, new jobs. And they're all classified by different things. You need to find something that works for you because yeah, taxes. <laughs> they're not so fun part of every job. <laughs> yeah. All right. So there are some questions. Um, that I think mostly Lisa, you may be able to answer, uh, but feel free to chime in um, if you also have some thoughts on it. Um, so this question and the others were like, how do you find an agent? Uh, Lola asked that um, and then, but maybe your agent found you, I'm not sure. And then, um, you know, how many, how do you know how many products are sold? If you have an agent, how you get paid for such a licensing deal? How does that whole process look like? Well, how to find an agent. I, I know there's different agents out there that work with different styles. Some pe some agents will, will have a more whimsical kind of background of artists and they work more with the kids uh, kind of uh, products. And then, well, you have to kind of research your, your agent because there are a lot of good agencies out there. And then um, what was the other question? Yes. Um, uh, I have I have tons of licensing sing deals and and products um, patterns are, are are and and collections are sold to companies um, for 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 ceramics and then for for um, stationery and then for wallpaper like one collection can go on all these different products so that's the plus of of licensing that you keep you keep the titles to your collection they belong to you and they can go on all these different products so yes you can um, throw the, throw them out to different companies i think that's that's basically it how important do you think is an agent and maybe it's not so much important but what are the pros and cons of working with an agent versus going it alone i have no cons 
that's, that's great. great. I mean, that's how you feel. And that's your experience. So that's wonderful. <laughs> oh, I did want to. So there was a one one time when I was in discussion with an agency that they were specifically a licensing agency and they wanted to work with me. And I ended up turning them down because their vision for my artwork was not we didn't share a vision. They wow. saw me. They're like, we want you in Hobby Lobby. We want. And I'm like, I don't want that. And they're like, no, no, no. But we'll do that for a while. And then we'll make a lot of money and then you can do it. And I was like, no, I don't want that. Um, so, yeah, like finding somebody that fits for you is pretty important. And if you if just because somebody's knocking on your door, it doesn't mean that it's going to be a good fit. It was hard to turn that down. Mm -hmm. um, I have thought like, well, should I get an agent? Maybe someday. I don't know. There is a lot that like I do like to handle things on my own. Um, and I do think that uh, while getting an agent someday is a great like goal, don't let it stop you from doing stuff now. Because I think a lot of us artists don't have an agent. Um, and kind of getting the feel of how things go before that happens for you is, is pretty important. Um, and also one of the things with the, this licensing agency is they wanted a yearly fee that um, I would pay. And I didn't know about that. And that was very like, oh, okay. So I have to pay you like several grand um, a year wow. to be a part of this licensing agency that will mm -hmm. cover X, Y, and Z. And I didn't want that. There's a lot of different types of agents out there. Um, there's obviously licensing agents, there's picture book agents, there's, um, yeah, there's all kinds and really do your research and make sure they're good fit. Cause clearly you see one person here who's like, I had no issues with it. And then others of us who have been approached by agents were like, that's not a good fit. Either you don't understand my work or we're just not seeing eye to eye or yeah. So just, you know, if that's something you're interested in, I would say that the con that you hear people talk about a lot is the payment end of it while they're handling all of your, you know, pitching your work for you and handling your taxes and all of that, you are, they are taking a cut. Um, different agents take different cuts. And so that's some artists that are really successful on their own. Um, there's a financial reason and they might not mind doing some of that other stuff where, you know, I think at some point I'm going to be tired of doing the tax part of it. And I'm like, it would be nice if someone handled contracts and all of that. And maybe that's worth giving up 40% or whatever the percentage is, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, in the licensing business, when you have an agent, you have to think also that they're going to get you more visibility. You're going to sell more. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the time that you spend not having to do all that, it depends. Some, some artists are very business savvy. They don't need an agent. They're good at, at, uh, at keeping everything in, in line and all that. Not me. Not, no, not at all. You know, I'm not good at that a lot at all. So I've tried without an agent and I tried just a few years back without an agent. And um, I said, hey, I don't need an agent anymore. I have all my clients. <laughs> right. I'm good. <laughs> and I wasn't alone. I was my art director. I told you about that. We've been working around. For 25 years, we've been working together. Well, we were both together in this, and he was doing the business side, and, and I was doing the art side, but it was just too much work, too much to handle. So mm -hmm. I tried going back to the no agent, but no. Sounds like it's, it's really a personal choice in a way with you got to evaluate what are your strengths, what are you willing to give up, what do you need help with, and then also can you get an agent? I mean, it's, you know... Mm -hmm. Maybe right now is not the right time or you're not able to find one and um, then maybe it's not a choice, <laughs> maybe that it's a long term goal, uh, but there's never that that perfect answer. So you have to find the one that works um, for you. A few more really interesting questions uh, that I'd like to put up. So one that we haven't talked about at all is a licensing attorney. Do you have one that looks over offers? Uh, maybe your agency does it or is that something that you have not done before? And thanks, That's Kimberly. something also. Do you go, do you girls uh, like uh, copyright all your images one by one? Like, I do the group. Yeah. I batch them um, right. if I can. If I've already um, for U.S. copyright law for anyone that's interested in this really boring <laughs> subject, um, you can send up to ten images that have not been published 
to get a more discounted rate. I think it's $85 for 10 images. If not, you've got to submit them. Like if I've already sold that image on Spoonflower, just say, or license it to a company, then I've got to individually pay to get that image copyrighted. Um, and the benefit, if anyone knows more about this, my understanding, the benefit to the copyright is even though you're the artist and you technically own what you've created, if a company were to just say, steal your artwork, whether they meant to or not, you could reach out to them and be like, hey, that's my artwork. And they'll probably be cool and be like, so sorry, we'll, you know, take it down or whatever. But it's what you should be getting is financially compensated for all the sales they've made already using your artwork. And if you don't have that copyright, it's really hard for that to happen. Like some companies will be cool about it and do the right thing and others won't. And so that's sort of the benefit to having that copyright. Um, yeah. Not a sexy topic. <laughs> <laughs> and even that's just so like, fun. yeah. Oh, contracts. No, contracts are not sexy, but mm -hmm. um, I, I, there have been times where I do wish that like I had some sort of like legal help to help me navigate some of these things, but it is really kind of tough to find um, uh, attorneys that are a little more specialized in the realm of mm -hmm. what we do. Um, but I think uh, it is good to learn how to read through a licensing agreement contract, which I think somebody asked, like, it, is a license, a con like a license, a contract contains a licensing agreement. A contract can contain a copyright agreement. It can contain, so like the contract is just, the vehicle for the information that happens in it. Um, I actually just had a client who I worked out a very specific, robust licensing deal with them. And they came back and they said, okay, you provide the contract. And I've never had to make a contract before. And um, it was tough, but there's ways around it. You, If you have other contracts that you have worked with, you can also take those and use those as a template. And I mean, but it is, tricky you have to really read through and make sure that you're also scrubbing any information from the pla the past client to uh um send it off but uh yeah so let's take one final uh question here from the audience um and i'm gonna alter it a little bit so uh, vizuta art studio asked how much work should you already have before approaching an agent and i'm gonna change it a little to or clients <laughs> how uh how do you think an artist can know they are ready to start pitching well from my point of view i think in a portfolio you should have you should touch the different seasons because there's summer, right? There's, there's, there's Easter, there's fall, there's um, Thanksgiving, there's Halloween, there's Christmas, there's winter, which is not Christmas. Mm -hmm. So you have all these different themes. So you can really show a big variety of what you can do. And this, this way they'll see that you are on trends and that you are following the seasons and that, that they, they have a, a sure deal if they, if they do if they do license something with you and it's working they want to have the follow up or they want to know that in your portfolio you have different options for them throughout the year right so if something does sell they they know they they want to come back to you cuz their your pro the product is selling because of your art right so i think that in your portfolio you must have at least I would say 10 different collections. I call them collections. I'm sorry. I don't know how you girls would, would kind of navigate this, but I would say at least 10 collections covering the different seasons. Wow. I think it, you're, I'm like, how do I say this? <laughs> it's not so much amount of artwork, like the, the size, the body of your portfolio. I mean, quality is really important. Like it can't hurt to pitch like, I don't want anyone to get to that place where they're like waiting for perfection because perfection isn't going to ever happen. So the worst that's going to happen if you're not ready is people just won't take your work, right? And so if you're ready for that rejection, okay. But I would say if you're really truly unsure, your time would probably be better focused perfecting your craft a little bit more. Like don't get hung up on that perfection, but make sure your portfolio feels good. Like walk stores and be like, is my art 
comparable quality wise to what I'm seeing out in the market I want to be in. And if you can answer yes to that, even if you're shy about your own work and you're ever, you know, we're all self-deprecating with that, but it's really about the quality. I've been seeing just so much churn lately of people being like, I learned how to make patterns and then churning out 9,000 patterns. And I'm like, okay, it's time to like look at them and refine them and really like learn your own voice and, and show that to the people. Cause I think seeing like four really great images as an art director, I can see potential in that artist. And I'm like, okay. But if I see a hundred average images that I'm like, okay, they're just winging these out. It, I'm probably going to pass. Um, and so I'd say there's, there's some, yeah, don't wait for perfection, but also take the time to hone your craft. That's where that patience piece comes in again. It's a lot of just practice, practice, hard work, find your voice, um, easier said than done. But. Yeah. And you are going to create more when you're following kind of, I think like the things that brought you to creating art, initially like what inspired you what sparked you to want to start making stuff like follow that at first and then when you kind of feel a little dried up it's kind of good to like yeah have a like an assignment of you know oh I'm gonna maybe approach things uh by like the seasons or something uh but it has to be something that feels exciting to you um otherwise you're you're not going to create something that is, I mean, yeah, authentic to your voice and what you can specifically bring to the market. Those are such helpful and varied answers. And I know I like that, honestly, because again, it's, there is no one and only way, but I think you're all giving really solid advice based on your experience. So that's so cool. So we're almost at the end here. I want to give you artists um, that have joined this interview a last chance. So just Jill and Lisa, um, is there anything that you had wanted to bring up that we haven't gotten to? Um, I have one question for you, Lisa, at the end about some teaching uh, that I think you might be able to help um, the artists who are interested in with, but um, anything else uh, that hasn't come up yet that you really want to give as a last final nugget of wisdom? <laughs> um, for me, it's just that being an artist is like part of being a community. And so support your other artists around you. Um, it's so easy with Instagram to forget that there's people behind that account that are working full-time jobs, that are very busy people. And so be, you know, be supportive. If you have questions, please ask them. I think most of artists are friendly and we want to help out, but you know, be, be kind about how you ask it. And, and yeah, just, just help build a community wherever you're at for other artists. I think that's just a big, you know, it's a small, it's a small world and we all want to help each other out. And yeah. Anything else that hasn't come up yet? I did just, I think there was a, something about uh, maybe like learning a skill that would be really helpful for, I, I don't know if I'm remembering it right, but it just made me think of the fact that I was making patterns wrong for years. <laughs> and I, I was kind of doing it a, like, oh, I'm having fun with it. I would like, I would make a, a, a design and then I would just move it over here and then fill it in and then move it over here and fill it in. And then, and then when I designed my first uh, um, fabric collection, I realized, Oh shoot, I've done everything wrong. Um <laughs> I got and I also I I found a procreate or not not a procreate um Skillshare, a Skillshare class that talked also about color separations for preparing patterns. And I think like being able to uh prep your files is a very very good thing to learn. Um yeah. <laughs> Don't flatten your artwork ever. Don't flatten your artwork. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> no. Learn Photoshop or Illustrator or whatever. You you have to scan and cut everything out. Every piece has to be movable to create different images. So it is a plus. It's not just a plus. If you don't have a, a Photoshop or illustration knowledge, you might have to hire someone mm. or you might have to learn. You have to learn. That's important part yeah and that's a good uh note to make about kind of like the tools of the trade i know somebody asked about procreate i've been using procreate a little bit mostly for like my job job but for my art art <laughs> i uh i do um 
on physical tracing paper. I, I sketch things out, then I take tracing paper and use marker and other things to get the shapes and the textures that I want. And I scan all of that and I bring it into uh, Photoshop and color things that way. And that's actually very helpful for, you know, creating new um, compositions. And then also the clients love that because nothing's, you know, completely flat. Everything can be edited. Um, but then also it gives me some control about the degree of flattenedness that I send out. Sometimes I will flatten things as a full and be like, this is your illustration that you paid for because I don't want people um, then messing with things afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, but keep it on file separate. Yeah, yeah. And send out the flattened if you want. Yeah. And back up your files. <laughs> These are all really good technical pieces, right? I mean, I think that would be horrible if you actually get to the point where you're about to get a licensing contract signed and then you find out that you have created the art in a way that the DPI is too low or like, yeah, they need it layered and you only have it flat and the whole thing falls apart. So those are some really good technical advice pieces. And I know there's so many additional classes on Skillshare or like you can do research, you can talk to these manufacturers and stuff, like just figure out what your standards are that you need to meet um, so that you don't end up in the situation of having all this beautiful work that actually can't be used on products. So this has been so, so, so incredibly helpful. And I really thank you all for your time. You've been so generous sharing this information. And I also appreciate all the artists watching. You've been helping each other in the chat. I know we weren't able to get to every single question. So I really appreciate that. Um, I do want to end though, Lisa, giving you a chance because I know you had mentioned, I think a lot of people watching are like super interested in this topic and this was helpful, but there's so, so much more to know. And I think you're actually going to start teaching about the art of licensing. Is that right? Yeah, I want to teach about um, how just how to paint watercolor. I want to refine uh, that, uh, teach about color theory, which is so important. Um, a lot of people I see or I notice don't quite get it, the colors, you know, and, and that's the beginning. You can have beautiful art, but if you don't have the right colorations, it's not going to go anywhere. <laughs> color, color, color. It's always important. So I do want to teach about that. I want to teach about the licensing part. It's all things that I want to teach about. But January, February, and March are the, the busiest times for me coming back from the shows, and I have a whole lot of things to get done. So I'm unable to get to that, but creating courses that people can – can go by online with some mentoring where I can help them one-on-one -on -one to go further and, and get through this licensing thing smoothly, right? And maybe showing them and introducing them to an agent, you know, <laughs> the easy way in. So <laughs> that's what, that's what I want to do. That's uh, in, in the, in this year, I'll be creating these courses. Very cool. So make sure to go check out the links in the description. You'll be able to find Lisa's website, her Instagram, and the same for Jill and Jess. Uh, you heard it. Community is so important. So go over, get yourself connected. And I, again, really want to thank you for joining and for everyone also in the chat being so active, asking us questions. I think this was a wonderfully helpful session. And with that, I am going to end the chat for today. And thank you all. And we will have our next session again in two weeks. So make sure you are subscribed to get lots of helpful art business insight. And outro is coming in just a few seconds. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.